ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. For one, Andre. You're not good at this. Get out. Let me tell you a personal story about Vince McMahon. You just made the list. Oh, my God. Yeah. Sorry. No speak English. Tell me. Yeah. Goodbye and good night. All two. It's still real to me, damn it! <laughs> Gummy, yeah. This is the worst town I've ever been in. Hold three. The Moss covers. Three handle. Family Redunzo. Mamma Mia! And now. Unchained.media presents the B. Plus Podcast! With your host, Greg Unchained. It's me, Austin! It was me all along, Austin! Number four, Armbar! I will never retire! I still got 200 more! I got 200 more holes to lift! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the B-Plus Podcast. I am your host, Greg Unchained. It is Tuesday, so you know what that means. You don't know what it means because this is a new episode that we've never done before. But we are going to talk Brit Res today. So joining me to talk this month in Brit Res is our friend from across the pond, Akil. How are you? I'm fantastic. What a great intro that was. I, I, I didn't even know what was going to happen. I was on the edge of my seat. <laughs> yeah, I, I try to. I've, I've ripped off Luke Harper's day thing. You know, on Twitter, he just talks about the day and it, it, every day. Yeah, and everyone always thinks something's actually going to happen. One day, something will happen. It's my favorite Twitter of all time, and so my my dream is for him to finally respond to one of my DMs and say, "Yeah, I'll I'll record myself saying it every day for you, like just like just once, just record himself saying all seven days." so that I can edit it in for my podcast, my shitty little podcast. See, see, my dream is one day someone will go to the Great Carly just anywhere. I just want to see him wrestle again. But, <laughs> someone will book know. the Great Carly. Yeah. yeah do, you, do you have to see it live, or are you happy to see it on TV? Like, if he was booked for All In, you'd be happy. I mean, I'd be, I mean what I'll say is, if he was booked for All In, it would have sold out in 15 minutes as opposed to half an hour, is all I'm saying. <laughs> I, I believe you. I believe you. All those uh, all those Indian fans would be jumping on the plane. Oh, he's, he's the biggest draw in the world. Anyway, Brit Res. <laughs> Brit Res, yes. We are here to talk Brit Res. So I myself uh, am not too familiar with Brit Res, right? So I'm, I'm getting into it a lot. So I, I, my story, I was a bit of a return fan after a few years. And when, when I say return fan, this was like back in 2013. So I've been back for a while. I really have no excuse for not knowing more of the UK stuff. But what's really drawn me over to the UK stuff is a lot of our Aussie guys going over there. So Brooksy's over there. Uh, we've got obviously Aussie Open, who I think we're going to talk about today because they had a, a really good match on a Rev Pro show that I just watched. Uh, but essentially I'm just starting to get across it. So that's where Akil comes in. You're going to join us and, and help me and the audience get across a little bit more of what's going on in our mother nation. Yes. So I haven't actually, I've been following Brit Rest now for three or four years, but just being in this country means I'm aware, much more aware of things than someone that maybe has been following for a couple of years for longer than me even, but um, is doing it from abroad. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we've we've gone with someone local, because you're, you're actually out there, you're on the front lines, you're getting out to shows, you're seeing stuff happen, and it's very exciting. So let's start with, I guess, what's the big things to come out of the UK this month? What, what, what do we have to talk about? Um, so basically, in this country, we have two big promotions, Progress and RevPro. Um, progress you've probably heard of because of the WWE UK connection. Um, they haven't actually, so they've spent most of this month in the US in the middle of their coast to coast tour. 
um, gearing up for their biggest show ever at the end of next month. Um, so there's not really much to talk about them besides the fact that they've just had a disaster of the last six months or so with injuries and people pulling out. And basically, they've been building towards um, a big show at the end of September in Wembley. And the idea was they had a big title match booked between Zack Sabre Jr. and their champion, Travis Banks, who's a Kiwi. Um, yeah. Zack Sabre Jr. got pulled from that show uh, because of the New Japan show, the Cow Palace, what's it called? Fighting Spirit something or other? Fighting Spirit Unleashed, FSU. That, that's the one, FSU. FSU is actually a, a tag team in progress, former tag team. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, with, with the exact same name, Fighting Spirit Unleashed, or no, they, does the FSU stand for something else? It was Friendship United. Okay. Yeah, Mark. I loved. I love tag teams that just talk about how they're friends. It's great. Yeah. Um, actually, they disbanded last year, and one of the biggest matches coming up in Wembley is them against each other. That's an aside. Um, oh, that's exciting. Yeah, it's been a very, very good feud. Um, but the main point, so Zack Sabre Jr. got pulled, which meant that Progress were out of the major main event. So they've been running this, what they've called the three and in tournament um, during this US tour. Uh, yeah. basic idea of the three and in tournament is you win three matches in a row, three singles matches in a row, you're in that. Um, you're in the main event of Progress Wembley. So okay, so kind of, kind of like Chikara, how they have the the point system to get to get a title shot. You have to have won a certain amount of matches in a row. Yeah, um, yeah. It's not actually been very popular with fans, just because the way they've done it has been very, very convoluted, and it's coming at the end of them having three or four other really badly booked tournaments. So people are just a little bit annoyed with what's going on there right now. Um, okay, fair enough. See, because the concept itself sounds fantastic to me. I like that idea of, of having to stack up wins before you're you know, given a title shot. It makes logical sense as a wrestling fan. I think it's a cool idea, but it became very difficult to follow, especially because promos don't put out shows. Like, those US shows haven't been released yet. So no one... It becomes really difficult to follow. Um, right, so we're talking about for people following on uh, Demand Progress, which I, I can attest to that because they came down here uh, earlier this year and they didn't do Adelaide, they didn't do my hometown, but they did Melbourne, Perth and Sydney. And the shows only went up last month. And this we're talking like a three, four month wait for, for those shows. So hopefully it's not that long for the US shows, but No, so I think as we're recording this, not to break K Fabe too much, as we're recording this, <laughs> um, they're not out yet. Potentially by the time this is actually released, um, they should be out because they have another sh- their last show before Progress Wembley the night before, on the Monday night. So you would hope it's all released, but who knows? Yeah, you'd want to give fans some time to catch up. So when is the Wembley show taking place? It is September 30th. Okay, cool. So end of end of the month. Yeah. And Wembley, Wembley's a huge stadium, Wem- right? Wembley is a massive... So there's two Wembleys. There's Wembley Stadium, and there's the smaller Wembley Arena. Wembley Arena still has a capacity of like 12,000 people or something ridiculous. Okay. And uh, have tickets sold out? Is it expected to sell out? Or are they like are they cutting off part of the thing for an entrance ramp so they only really have to fill 6,000 kind of thing? It's interesting because I was actually having this conversation with someone else earlier today. Um, we don't actually know how well it's selling. They, when the show was announced, they made it very clear that we don't expect this to sell out because it's a ridiculous amount of tickets. We're going to be yeah. realistic. And all throughout the way, they've been saying, look, we're aware we're not going to sell out. We just want to do something cool. 
Um, so right now we don't know how well tickets are selling. I would imagine fairly well based on just progress fans are very diehard and will go to yeah. see this, but like I don't have any hard numbers to give you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, progress are fantastic from everything I've seen. I mean, I really love their rule. The rule that he likes to say before the show starts, uh, I think is fantastic. And the way they're changing the culture in UK wrestling, I think is a really, really big thing. Um, Is uh, To me, to me at least, I think it's a a pretty fantastic thing. It's interesting because progress are very important in the current Brit wrestling boom we're going through. A lot of the reason people are interested in Brit Rats is because Progress for a while was doing really, really good stories, had amazing matches. The Will Ospreay Marty Scale match from 2016 is probably what put Will Ospreay on the map. Um, they had an incredible The Jimmy Haddock story, which is what Progress was built on. Um, but the basic idea is Jimmy Havoc was a former deathmatch wrestler who wanted to prove that he could actually wrestle. Um, he, yeah. he eventually gets put into a death match and he gets real pissed off about that and just goes insane and wants to destroy the company because he's like, look, I told you guys I'm more than a death match wrestler. If you want me to be a death match wrestler, I will be the most destructive death match wrestler you've ever seen. I'm not selling it amazingly, but it was an incredible story. No, that does. That sounds fantastic. I was just sort of giving it room to breathe. That's uh, I've I've heard about the stuff with Jimmy Havoc, and he can actually wrestle. So <laughs> I see. I didn't even know he was known as a deathmatch wrestler because the stuff that I'd seen for him was all him just actually wrestling. Yeah. And so when when I found when I found out that he was known as a deathmatch wrestler, I was like, oh wow. And he came down here and did a tour with World Series Wrestling, and it was him and Abyss every night, and they brought in some of our guys as well, and they had like. Uh, Mick Moretti had a, a pillow that was filled with barbed wire that he attacked him with. And it's all it's all up on uh, Global Wrestling Network for anyone who's interested. But yeah, I didn't even know he was a, a deathmatch guy until until then. Yeah, so, mean, you know, I guess the story works. Yeah, I mean, to put it into perspective, he trained with Zack Sabre Jr. So, yeah. um, I mean, he, I'm not going to say he's a great normal wrestler. He's by far better at deathmatch wrestling. But he has those fundamentals. And I think, as an aside, in deathmatch wrestling in general, a lot of the top deathmatch guys do have those fundamentals. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, Joey Janela is a deathmatch guy too, right? But again, uh, see, I'm not a huge fan of uh, that kind of wrestling. Uh, for a long time, I called it garbage wrestling, but I've kind of come around on it. But And and I respect it for what it is. I mean, those guys work hard. <laughs> the things they do, I uh, can't even imagine. But... But it's just not for me. It's for other people. That's fine. But but yeah. But Joey Janela, I knew him as just a you know a regular wrestler as well. From for, especially now he's doing things in Evolve and stuff. But uh, yeah, seeing his deathmatch stuff is kind of crazy when you think about it. Yeah, no, and again, he's another guy where he can wrestle. I think he's better at the deathmatches. But again, that's a whole other tangent. We're here to talk about Brit Rats, <laughs> yeah. not. Yeah, that could be a whole yeah, episode. <laughs> Joey Tomano, what a man. Anyway, anyway. Um, um, no, so one of the things about yeah, the culture... So, so progress will built on these stories, anyway. No. One of the things I wanted to say about the culture is there's something very interesting happening in this country right now in that because there's this idea of the progress is don't be a dick for me, there's a lot of people yeah. that have... And I don't want to. I don't want to sound ridiculous when I say this. There's people that have taken that almost a step too far, where it's like, look, anything slightly mean gets called out and gets really, really aggressive. The progress fan, progress fans, right now, there's a bit of toxicity within that group. Now, the actual product they're releasing is very, very good, but or is can be very very good but there's a lot of resentment within the fan base right now because there's these outsiders that are uh, you know they're they're taking the whole be nice to everyone thing to an extreme that's not really i I don't think i'm explaining myself very well but you kind of see what i'm saying 
No, I think I think I get what you're saying. That the, they there's always a group of people that that take it too far, that take things too far. I mean, I you know that that that's always going to happen. Uh, and the don't be a dick thing to me. That's what's so great about don't be a dick is it's very middling, if that makes sense. It's it's not it's not be uh, super nice yeah. to everyone all the time, and it's not uh, you know it's okay. But it, what it is is it's saying it's it's not okay to be a dick. I, I think it's pretty self explanatory personally, but people need to realize that it goes on the other side as well. If you're being a dick to the people that you think are being a dick, even though maybe 90% of other people don't think they're being a dick, then you're probably the dick. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> so there's a fine yeah, line, yeah, I completely, guess. Completely. Um, that's a whole weird tangent we've got on, but, um, well, that's, that's something I wanted to talk about when it comes to rev pro as well. Cause there was an incident with rev pro that I think we actually disagree on with the, uh, Sam Adonis thing. Yeah, so for those that don't know, what basically happened is, so Sam Adonis is a luchador. He works in Arena Mexico. He, Arena Mexico for CML, CMLL even. He, his big gimmick is that he's a Trump supporter in Mexico. Um, as an aside, he's also Corey Graves' brother. I don't think that's relevant, but just for people to get a full context of who this man is. So he debuted at a cockpit show. Now, the cockpit, the 11 cockpit is a very small venue that Rev Pro runs about once a month. It holds, I don't know, like 100, 200 people. It's a very intimate venue. Um, so he debuted in his cockpit, attacking two, um, two faces. And he started cutting a promo. And I think the way it's been explained by the promoters and things is he came in thinking oh I'm Sam Adonis, I'm this big star in Mexico, everyone will know who I am and then obviously no one no one did right. know who he was unfortunately and because he panicked he started using slurs to try and get heat he used homoph- isn't right, which is lazy. he used homophobic slurs he used ableist slurs um Fans completely turned on him, super pissed off. Rev Pro had to put out a statement saying, look, we're never booking this man again. He was cut out from that cockpit show when he was released. And frankly, the entire show was sort of ruined because just the atmosphere completely came out of the venue that everyone was just so annoyed with this man that this man did what he did. Now, I personally don't think Sam Adonis is a bad guy. And that might get me a lot of hate. What I do think is there is a line when it comes to being a heel and using homophobic slurs is way, way crossing that line, you know? Like there's things which completely take you out of right, yeah. wrestling. Because wrestling, wrestling fundamentally is it's a dumb thing people watch to get some enjoyment out of. If you're using using something which causes people actual pain and there's not if you're using something that causes people a lot of actual pain that's going to take them out of that that entertainment and that's too far and yes it's an easy is the is another point it's a very very lazy way to go about actually trying to get people to dislike you i don't know yeah, absolutely. That's that's my thing. Is I do think it's I do think it's lazy. But then at the same time, when I saw the reaction to it, especially after, because he apologized and said, "Look, it was that was, it was tone deaf and that it was, was a after. mistake." This right. Is, this is and, a key point. At first, he was like, "Oh no, wait, just you wait. This is just chapter one in the story. Just you wait. It will all make sense." That I think is a big mistake he made. He should have immediately yeah. gone, "Nah, sorry, I fucked up." Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. I, I can, I can see how, I can see how that would be construed, but then at the same time, I'm a big story guy, right? So I actually study mythology and narratology and, and uh, at university, that's kind of my bag. And you can't, you can't have stories without good and evil. 
in my opinion. I mean, there's obviously all sorts of room for all sorts of shades of gray. I love a good shade of gray, you know, Breaking Bad is uh, one of the best shows of all time. <laughs> shades of gray are fantastic, but you need to have evil. There has to be a standard, right? And and if, if we're going to say that on our wrestling shows, which we have to keep in mind are a fantasy, if we have to say that they can't go out there and do things that, that do cause real pain, I, I think it's a... I think it's a dangerous precedent and it could damage the product as a whole, if that makes sense. See, I think I, you have to compare it to other forms of entertainment, right? I'm a big proponent of treating wrestling like a TV show. Now, if in a TV show, if you had a bad guy, you, you wouldn't have a bad guy calling people the, uh, the gay F word, for example. That just wouldn't happen. Even in something like Game of Thrones or like HBO's type stuff where there's less of a clear defined line of what's right and wrong to put out, you don't, they realise there's things which are too far. And I think... Well, see, I just, I I still disagree because, for example, on Orange is the New Black, uh, this last season of Orange is the New Black, which I managed to binge on my day off last week, they had uh, one of the pivotal scenes for a certain character who was one of the guards, right? And the guards are meant to be irredeemable. And this season has done a lot to try to redeem the guards that sort of brutalize these, these inmates. And essentially they were at a fair and one of the, there was an escaped prisoner who's a smaller girl. She was dressed as a dude to sort of hide herself. And she was holding hands with her boyfriend, who's one of the guards and some people walked past and they called them, some names and you know made out that it was disgusting even though it's 2018 and this guy stood up and and was like hey that's not okay and he punched him in the face (laughs) right and it was a pivotal moment for that character now if those uh random passers-by hadn't been so thoroughly evil by doing that then this character would not have had that moment of growth and we never would have gotten that. And then come the the season finale and everything, we wouldn't have cared about this guy when we needed to. So I I think there is still a place for it as long as it's, you don't want it to be the whole story, you know, but there is a place for it. I think the difference comes in the fact that he was, he was attacking the fans as opposed to another wrestler. If he had said, if he had said this about another wrestler, then maybe... I would still think it's wrong, but maybe there would be some justification in it. I think the fact that... Yeah. Yes, yeah, so if he'd come out against Jack Sexsmith specifically, for example, and, and had been attacking him, then then it could possibly be, you know, narratively forgivable. But because it was directed at fans as a way of getting heat, you think that's it's, it's, a line yeah, that can't be crossed? It's interesting that you bring up Jack Sexsmith and more people because... For people that don't know, Jack Sexsmith's gimmick is that he's a polyamorous um, wrestler. His his uh, tagline for a while was sexually frivolous, morally ambiguous, or something like that. Yeah. Um. So what this actually got compared or not to? He had a feud with Zach Gibson, who we see on NXT UK, um, where the basic idea was Zach Gibson was, it was implied that Zach Gibson was being a bit homophobic, but he, ne- he never went out and said it, you know? Okay. He always said, ah, oh, we don't really belong. And it was more, it could have been construed as more, ah, oh, you're just not a very good wrestler. So I think subtleties were also important. And that's, again, right, yeah. getting back to it, he's just, Sam Adonis is just a bit lazy in what he's doing. Yeah, absolutely. And there there was no nuance to it from what I've heard. But that's the thing is I never I'm never gonna get to see it. And that's something else that, that worries me is erasing things from history. Like I think that it's important to put it out there and be like, look at what this guy did, okay? Wrestlers, watch this show on demand progress and then don't do this. <laughs> you know? I think that that's an important thing to do as well. So the erasing of it is another mm. issue that I have. And the other thing, I'm not sure where I fall on that because I'm against I'm someone that believes in trying to keep as much tape as possible, just in general. Um, but equally, yeah. there's, 
And yeah. I just fall back to there's things which are too far. There's things which should, shouldn't be put out into the world. Yeah. I mean, I think you should put a warning on it for anyone who may be you know, offended by certain language and, and, and make sure people know that it's coming. You don't let it just hit them out of nowhere, which it did for the people who were live in attendance, right? So especially being a uh, being a, a Rev Pro show, Rev Pro tend to be fairly safe in that way, right? You're not going there. It's not... They're a family show. Yeah. They're a family show. That's important. E- exactly. That's Because context is the biggest thing. Context is key when we're talking about these kinds of issues. If you were going to an ICW show, maybe it would be, you know, less shocking for that to happen. But the fans were not expecting someone to come out and try to get heat this way. Uh, and that's entirely on him. Know your audience, bro. <laughs> so, just, just as an aside, please don't go to an ICW show. They're very, very bad. <laughs> They're a bad company. Don't support them. Oh, I've seen, I've seen a few matches there that weren't bad. Oh, you're lying to yourself. I'm lying to it. Fair enough, fair enough. Sorry, aside. Don't want at some point we will at some point we will end up talking about ICW, but they're a bad company. We don't like them. Alright. Alright, I'll keep that in mind. So uh, yeah, anyway, the the point that we're making though is that the culture is changing and it's changing for the better. And and progress is a big part of that, and Rev Pro are doing a good job with it as well, other than this slight hiccup around the Sam Adonis thing, which brings up all kinds of uh, conversation that we can have, which is a good thing because we should be having these conversations. We we need to make sure we're not shying away from these kinds of things. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, so, but, but moving on, RevPro have had a, a pretty big month, I'd say. Um, so they had two or three major shows this month. Um, they had that cockpit show we've just been talking about with Sam Adonis. Um, they also right, and just for for the Australian fans listening, because a, a big core of our fan base is based in Australia, uh, the cockpit show was the one that I'd posted about on the bplus dot com that featured a match with Adam Brooks and Jonah Rock. As an aside, so, so before uh, we go into Rev Pro, can we just talk about Adam Brooks? Yeah, absolutely. I know we had a run sheet and everything, but we I'm just. <laughs> We're going off script, people. I'm just taking over the show. Um, you're never going to invite me back. Um, <laughs> we've had we've had a lot of Aussies and um, Kiwis um, come over here yeah. to try and mainly because of Travis Banks. Travis Banks is a Kiwi that's come over here. He's become quite a big success, and he has a house in the middle of the country. He's inviting a lot of his friends to come over. Mark Davis is here. Carl Fletcher is here. Charlie Evans is here. Yeah. Um, Jen, Joan Rock is a regular here. There's all sorts. Tony Storm was a big one as well. Um, Tony Storm, of course. Of course. <laughs> um, she, she was here before Travis Banks. In fact. Before Travis Banks, yeah. yeah. So Adam Brooks is an Australian guy that's come over here. Yes. I don't know. I've never seen any of his work in Australia. But he came in with a lot of hype. He had a couple of big matches with Will Ospreay, who he seems to have very, very good chemistry with. Yeah. And then it's sort of done nothing since. And it has, a lot of people are starting to turn on him because, and I'm going to be completely frank here, he sucks. Oh, hey, <laughs> hey, we're big Brooksy guys on this show. Oh, am I going against... I apologize. Then. <laughs> but no, no, it's really... all right. You're gonna get you're gonna get some heat from some of our listeners. That's all I'm saying. That's fine. That's fine. I'll give you. You my... can be the heel. You can be the heel host. <laughs> that's fine. I'll give you my Twitter at the end. You can DM me. We'll have a chat. But I don't get Adam Brooks. Can you explain Adam Brooks to me? Um, I mean, look I... to me, he's to me he's always been more of a character guy. I like his his character work and. I, I'm not familiar with what's been going on over there in the UK, so I haven't uh, seen. I haven't seen a lot, and and so I can't really comment as to how he's going over there. But definitely his stuff over here. I mean, he's he's one of our breakout guys. Um, and so if if you if you want, go back and watch some of his stuff in Melbourne City or Riot City. I think his some of his stuff from Riot City Wrestling will be on the YouTube because uh, most of the Riot City wrestling stuff makes it to YouTube. Melbourne City, you want to watch that on demand. But it, yeah, you, you watch some of his stuff from here. It could also... I mean, I, I'm not sure wh- why it's not translating, 
over there well, if, if you say that he's so there's big portions of the crowd that's just not catching on or so people are very excited for him to start with um yeah a lot of people are starting to turn on him now and he had to bring it back to what we were originally talking about he had a match at this big rev pro show summer sizzler which is their second biggest show of the year he had a match against yeah he was Kushida. Kushida. yeah and um no one really cared about the match, to be honest with you. A lot of the issue. Right. So I was watching that match while I was editing. So I was editing another podcast. So I had it on mute. So I didn't even notice the crowd. But just watching the match, it was a solid match. It wasn't the best Brooksy match I've seen. It wasn't the best Kashina match I've seen, obviously. But it was a solid match. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I'm just. I, but again, I was watching on mute. So you lose half of it when you're watching on mute, to be honest with you. Yeah, so a lot of a lot of people are starting because what he, what it seems to be is he has these very long drawn out matches, and then just ends things with a low blow, and I appreciate that he's working with a lot of different companies and he's getting his character over, on, or he's tr- doing this character, not necessarily giving it over. He's doing this character yeah. of I'm gonna just kick you in the balls and win, right? But I think. The working standard in this country is so high right now that you need to be more than just a character guy to get over. Right, yeah. But, I mean, he he does put on solid matches as well. That's the part that's confusing me when you say that it's not... Uh, I mean, I don't know, maybe... It, it I, just... I have to get across it more. I have to get across it more to know exactly why, but... Uh, definitely, I'd, I'd recommend watching. Uh, I'm familiar with him most from Riot City because they're my local, right. and so he he did some work down here, and, and and he did he caught my eye at first because he's the loose ledge now. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he was here, he was a loose something else, which is a bit I of an see. Aussie phrase, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it starts with a C, and and it was. <laughs> We try to keep it a little PG, and that word's what I'm not comfortable necessarily saying on the air. I say it with my friends, you know. So it's, but essentially, he it, it, that caught my eye because I was like, "Whoa, we're at a wrestling show, and someone's throwing that out." Like, what's going on? And uh, but you know, so it is it, for me. Like I said, always been a character thing, but. I don't know. Maybe I, I. I don't. I can't tell you because I haven't. I, I, once I get across some more of the Rev Pro stuff, so. Uh, I'll definitely be able to to help you out with it with with what's going wrong. But for me, I enjoy watching Adam Brooks work, and and I mean he's a heel, so he's he's meant to be hitting those low blow spots and and sort of ending things when you don't want him to, and when you're like, oh, the match was just getting going, that's, you know. That's, it's, sorry, I think that's the key I, point. I, the match never really gets going. Yeah. Right, so he's not hitting that higher gear, but he can hit that higher gear. So definitely, I'll I'll send you some some uh, Melbourne City wrestling matches for you to take a look at. Yeah, or I'll find find some of his Riot City stuff on YouTube because it, it it shocks me that it's not translating. I mean, he's coming back this month. He's coming back for a few shows, and he's he's coming back a, a returning hero of sorts. I'm going to be interested to see uh, if he manages to still like work heel when he gets back here or if he's I think he's gonna have to be the, the returning baby face. Uh you guys can keep him. We don't really want him <laughs> back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I don't Brooks fans. Please don't hurt me, but your man sucks. Right. I'm I'm you know I'm I'm actually sitting down to interview him on September first. So should I tell oh, him you say hi? Please do please please tell him. I don't go to shows anymore. I don't care. <laughs> So, is it a large portion of the fan base, or it's honestly it's the entire fan base? Everyone that I know, a fair amount of people that go to most shows in this country. I don't know a single person that is enjoying him, frankly. And like, I don't, I don't say this to be mean because I'm just being honest. Yeah. He's not, he's not connecting. Yet. Yeah. If it's something where it, t- it might take him a while, we've had people. So El Fantasma is a Canadian that's come over here um, about a year ago, and it took him about a year to actually get good. So it might just be it's going to take him long to adapt. But he's he's right. been here for about eight yeah. months now, and, and honestly, there's not a single match of his I can say go out of your way to watch. Yeah, a lot of our guys are connecting over there, right? Like Mark Davis and Carl Fletcher are doing really well. Mark Davis and Carl Fletcher are probably the top tag team in this country right now. 
that's that makes me very happy to hear. That makes my heart happy. So uh, let's let's talk about. And they had a really good match. I just watched uh, against CCK. What's the so CCK? Uh, Jonathan Gresham is not always part of this team, right? So CCK has a very complicated lineage. Um, it stands for Kelmari Catch Kings. Um, so it was originally Chris Brooks and Jonathan Gresham. Um, Jonathan Gresham is from the US. So obviously at some point yes. he had to go back to the US. Um, and he's one of my favorite uh, young wrestlers at the moment, Jonathan he's Gresham. He's incredible. He's, he's been one of the most underrated wrestlers for about five years now. And I'm so happy that this yeah. year seems to be a really strong year for him. But finally starting to take notice. Um, so he was a mineral part of the Mario Catch Kings. Uh, he left, and so Chris Brooks started, DC, started CCK again with um, Kid Lycos. Um, Kid Lycos, he's not a werewolf, he's a wolf. Who, who is a werewolf? He's a wolf. He's a wolf, okay. He, it's a very Takara gimmick, but he's a wolf. Like Chris Wolf as well. Yeah, he's the problem wolf of Britress. Okay. Um, uh, he also, so Chris Brooks also had another CCK team with Travis Banks. Um, so what ended up happening was Kid Lycos is injured right now, and Travis Banks is, because he's under a WWE UK contract, he can't wrestle for Rev Pro. Um, so Chris Brooks, Chris Brooks is the most, he is, so Chris Brooks is a guy that used to post on message boards. He was on, uh, the Observer, Observer message board. He was on CDW fans back in the day. Um, that's a real old school thing. Um, that's a real old school <laughs> message board. Um, he used to make gear for Chris Hero and uh, t-shirt designs for Chris Hero. So he's a guy that's, he's been a part of the wrestling community and has just decided to become a wrestler. Um, right. So, and I say all this because he's not a very good singles wrestler. He should stick to being in tag teams. So Jonathan Gresham has been over here for a little while because of the ROH talk. Um, and obviously Chris Brooks needed a match for this big Summer Sizzler event, which is Rev Pro's second biggest show of the year. Um, so Gresham was brought in, and we got a ret- the return of the OG CCK, Calamari Catch Kings. Okay. Right. So okay. So what's the Calamari? I have to. Know. Why Calamari? Because they're big. They're big gangly boys that are good at octopus holes. You know, calamari, octopus, okay. octopi. Okay. Yeah, octopus, calamari. Right. It, it, I was just like, calamari, catch kings. Like, what's what's going on? I understood the catch part. And yeah, it, it was a really, really good match. So this is, I, I hadn't seen any uh, CCK previously. I haven't seen any of Chris Brooks. <clears throat> and uh, I mean, I, I guess he didn't really, I won't say he didn't do much, but Jonathan Gresham is a wrestler's wrestler like he's a uh, but they do a lot of a lot of cool tag team spots like the you know the f- when uh gresham sat on the ropes and and brooks hits hits the opponent's head into the boot and just all different you know various random double team offense that's not necessarily conventional double team offense yeah so that um, a lot of that will be coming from chris brooks who is a guy that is very good at coming up with, with a lot of really weird, really really weird inventive tag team moves. He watches, uh, he watches a lot of Dragon Gate out of the US, out of Japan even US. He's got insane. Um, yeah. yeah. And there's a joke among British wrestling people that Chris Brooks reads every review that people put out and just listens to everything. But he's a man that just really loves wrestling, and so. We'll take a little thing from here, a little thing from there, and come up with these really wild, inventive moves. 
That's fantastic. Oh, you know what? He sounds like my kind of guy, to be honest with you. I, I watch an inordinate amount of wrestling. Uh, people have told me I have a problem. But so so I, I feel like, uh, you know, that, that resonates with me. And, and it makes sense then when I was watching the match, how I just thought there was something. There was just something about them as a team. And, and if he's a big tag team guy and that's what he does, that's his specialty. That's very exciting. I'm going to have to go back and take a look at some more CCK stuff. Yeah, so just because I don't know if we've actually said it, this is Calamari Catch Kings versus Aussie Open, Carl Fletcher and Mark Davis. Um, right, yes. This same show also had, I don't know if you've seen it yet, um, Walter Ish- Ishii in the main event. No, I haven't gotten to the main event yet. I'm, I'm currently, uh, before we went live, I was in the middle of the CMLL feature match uh, between Titan and... I've forgotten the other guy's name, uh, but <laughs> two, two of the, yes. And, and they've, they've come over from uh, Mexico, which is another area that I'm not too familiar with, but uh, uh, CMLL at the moment are working with ring of honor. They're working with new Japan. They're working with obviously rev pro. It's like this nice little strong style family that have this uh, Lucha Lucha brother that sometimes gets forgotten about, but they're starting to feature the CMLL guys a little more, which is really nice. So it's going to, going to help us uh, get introduced to that world a little more. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I haven't seen the entire show yet either. Um, I've heard a lot of good yeah. things about that Lucha match. Um, the main event. Yeah. But the Walter issue match is one I'm excited for. I'm just not quite up to it yet. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's an incredible, incredible. No, actually, I take that back. It's a bit of a letdown compared to I think what you would think of of Walter Ishi match, which would be you know a lot of really hard, stiff chops, punches, yeah. all this. Um, yeah, I expect them to knock the hell out of each other. Yeah, I think it felt a bit reserved. Um, that may be because. There's more down the line. This is just step one of a larger story. But as a first match, it wasn't, it didn't blow me away. I think the must watch match from Rev Pro Summer Sizzler on rpwondemand.com, yeah. cheap plug. And <laughs> the must watch match on that is the Aussie Open CCK tag match, which got a standing ovation from the audience. Which yeah, absolutely. Deal. It was. It was a it was a very good match. I'll, I will drop links in the show notes to uh, in the show notes to RPW on demand. But the other thing for Rev Pro this month was they announced some TV tapings. Uh, they haven't announced a TV deal, but they've announced that they are taping TV. Uh, so what's the go with that one? Well, so um, Summer Sizzler took place in this very famous venue called York Hall um, a couple of weeks ago. They announced they're doing. TV tapings in your hall on it's Monday, Tuesday, so the day this is released will be the second day. So it's Tuesday, Wednesday. So the day this is released will be the first day of the TV tapings. Um, yes. As of recording, we don't know many details about what this actually is. Um, but just a couple of hours ago, I was listening to. Um, Andy Corden is the promoter of Red Pro. Um, he has a podcast. Yeah. And on that podcast, he just said, look, we are... This was a very this was a fairly last-minute thing. It's going to be on a real TV channel. Um, we're expecting to announce it on Friday. So by the time you're listening to this, you'll probably know more than we do. Um, they have complete creative control of what's going on. Um, they've flown in Kevin Kelly and a um, load of New Japan guys to be a part of this TV taping. Um, right. That's also because Kevin Kevin Kelly Kevin Kelly is my favorite announcer at the moment, so I'm very excited that he's going to be calling the action. Yeah, Kevin Kelly is he's gotten very good very quickly. I didn't like him in Ring of, when he was doing Ring of Honor for a while, but I think since becoming the New Japan English commentator. He's really stepped up his game. He's really, really good. Um, so these TV tapings are happening. Um, they're throwing in a load of New Japan talent as well, partly because that week of the TV tapings, 
they also have um, at the end of the week they have the British J Cup as part of there's a weird event going on wrestling media con it's a whole other side it's nonsense um, so they're running the two days of the British J Cup and they okay, brought yeah. a lot of New Japan home for that as well um, earlier today they announced the Kanemari Catch King against Volta and Timothy Thatcher as a non as a non tournament match, which is going to be incredible. Nice. And uh, they've got a load of other shows coming up. But yeah, TV tapings. We don't really know what's going on, what the deal is. We'll find out soon. But we know that it's going to be a TV station, though, which is interesting. So. Are they looking to compete with World of Sport, potentially? No, 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 I don't think so. Again, details are very, very sparse. I don't think they're going to go try and compete with World of Sport. Andy Corden has been very critical of World of Sport and how they're handling things, but I don't think they are... That's not their main goal. Because BrevPro is actually a very, very big company that runs an absurd amount of wrestling shows. So their bread and butter is their training school, these big local shows, these contender shows. And so the cockpit shows, they've got their own training school shows. So that's their bread and butter. I don't think they'll be interested in trying to compete with this, these monolithic companies that are around right now. But I could be completely wrong. Maybe they've got a deal with okay, yeah. someone major. I would be surprised. I think it's more likely it's a... I wouldn't get my hopes up too much for these TV tapings, is all I'm going to say. Okay. Well, we'll be keeping an eye on it. And as you said, the news will break before this airs. So I will, in the show notes, I will we'll put a little note and, and, and a link to any story that has broken about what's going on with the TV tapings. Uh, we, but speaking of World of Sport, World of Sport debuted this month. That's we can't really talk this month in BritRes without going through some World of Sport. So, uh, I personally watched the first two episodes. Uh, I haven't watched the last two that have aired. I thought it, it uh, it's terrible. I mean, you said Andy Quilden had some things to say about it. it, it I, he's been a, a a critic, and to be honest, I'm a critic as well. I think it's it's been absolutely awful. It is really, really bad. I think, and I want to make this clear, the actual, it's nothing to do with the actual performers on the show. What it is, it's really weirdly edited. Um, they seem to, they've taken the Kevin Dunn, let's edit every couple of seconds thing to an absolute yeah. extreme. Um, yes. There's no character development or anything. It's just matches for the sake of matches. We have no reason to care about anything that's going on. Um, it's just, frankly, it's not a very good show. I think from the little bit I, I've heard, it's coming more from ITV and what ITV want. They're not really, they're not super interested in producing a wrestling show as much as they are producing just a family night entertainment show for five six o'clock in the evening you know right but it well, see for me wrestling. yeah well see for me it's, it's, it's been frustrating as you said there's been zero character development so i'm i'm watching it and I, and i compare it to my other main exposure to the uk scene obviously i've i've been looking at, at progress and rev pro for a while now and and sort of seeing bits and pieces here and there but my main exposure has been as with most people who are listening to this will have been through wwe uk and the wwe uk tournament uh, does a fantastic job even with the character development and they're literally it's a tournament it's matches for matches sake <laughs> so but they air a nice little interview video package with each guy beforehand and it gives you a real sense of who they are where they're coming from what they're going for and I mean, Pete Dunne in that first UK tournament became an instant star overnight because of his his arc throughout that tournament and the attack before the finals and all that sort of thing. And then you've got World of Sport come out and you, you start the show with Grado as your champion, which for anyone tuning in, 
elsewhere. I mean, Grado is a comedy character. He's not a world champion. So <laughs> it's it's a little off-putting to begin with. You're like, oh, this guy's the world champion. What's going on here? And obviously they wanted to get the world title off him quickly, which makes sense. But then they give us five guys in a match that they don't tell us anything about any of these guys. It's just like, hey, this one guy's a heel, and now he's the champion. And it was like, okay, I do not care about uh, Sorry, Rampage. I'm sure uh, you've done some fantastic work. <laughs> you know, the like I said, the, the in-ring work isn't necessarily terrible. The way it's cut and edited, as you mentioned, is atrocious. It makes you almost sick to try to watch it. But, it, yeah, just I had no reason whatsoever to care about any of it. And it stripped all the identity away from British wrestling and as well, it didn't help that I tuned in for World of Sport, and then I didn't get a chain wrestling sequence until the third or fourth match. I mean, I didn't. I didn't think What's going that, on? I didn't think that matters <laughs> too much, just because that's not really. Even though, yeah, I see what you're saying. It's World of Sport. It's got this lineage, but that's not yeah. really what British wrestling is right now. And if you want to be a no, but it would have been nice for me tuning in as a as a fan coming because of like this is world of sport and and that is what i mean when when i think of british wrestling you know zack saber jr is the man he's one of my favorite wrestlers you know and 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 that whole style you know i love jack gallagher and the way he does the the limb manipulation stuff is a big thing for me at least so maybe maybe it's just me being selfish and maybe i'm the only person but i can't imagine i'm the only person who thought that tuning in and to have it not even be there at all it felt like a real disservice to the brand um i mean i think that's a personal preference if thing um what i will say is yeah i've watched every episode so far there's only been one decent -ish match i have no reason to care about any of the people involved in the match and it's not even like it was some incredible match it was will osprey versus Mario and now we're on the first show with no explanation of who he was she was just randomly yeah. brought back for, I think this was the fifth episode. Again, no explanation who he was. Um, Martin Kirby has, is a heel, but we don't really know why he's a heel. We don't really know. We don't even know who he is, really. He's just armed oh, because he's a generic bad guy. They had a. Yeah, and that's the thing is they've stripped. They've stripped the identity away. And if you want to be a, a family show, I've heard that, like you said, they want to be a just family entertainment for kids and stuff at, at that five or six o'clock hour. You kind of you need to go the other route with it. You need it to be very clear. Why is this guy a bad guy? Why is this guy a good guy? You know, and it's it's not rocket science. It's pro wrestling. <laughs> yeah, I, I would be surprised if after this 10 episode run, we see much more of it. Yeah, I, I, I also don't – because the ratings have slipped as well. It started very, very strong, uh, and they liked to – they came out trumpeting, you know, historic, huge ratings, rah, 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 and then it's just and fallen off completely. And it was decent ratings, but it wasn't anything to really hold your hat on. And one of the big issues with the rating you want, yeah. it peaked in the last five minutes. That's not really what you want. You want it to peak somewhere in the middle and it came on just before the six o'clock news so it's very very likely with all those people that are tuning in right for the last, for the last five minutes i just doing because they want to watch the news and this happens to be on yes yeah, so they're turning over to watch the news and they're going what the hell is this then exactly uh, the ratings have been flipping since then there's a slight uptick in this last week but again they're not great ratings. I mean, might be happy with them, but I would be surprised if we see a lot of it. Well, something we'll definitely be following to see where it goes. And uh, the other thing that I really wanted to talk about and touch on it briefly, WWE UK, which is now obviously rebranding NXT UK. Uh, they've done some tapings, and I'm very upset because we see a coming soon on the network, but they haven't, I mean, these were taped at the beginning of the month, right? Mm -hmm. And we haven't seen anything yet. I mean, NXT tape and, you know, two weeks later, the, the first episode from that taping is on TV. 
I, I, I want to see. I want to see what's going on. And now it's it's getting increasingly hard to avoid spoilers. Now, I'm someone who I like to report on the shows as they air, as opposed to when they tape. So we'll try to stay away from spoilers if we can. But I, I like to report on the shows as they air. And I can't report anything. But now things are coming out about the women's tournament and all this sort of stuff. And it's getting very hard to avoid spoilers. So WWE, get your shit together and put NXT UK on the network. Sorry, that's my little rant. It upset me uh, that that we haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I, I'm really confused on what's going on. So there's a second set of tapings going on this weekend as we're recording. They will have just happened as this is put out, um, where they're crowning the first NXT UK Women's Champion. But again, we don't have any idea when these shows are coming out. It seems to be that they're trying to get a real TV deal, maybe just end up being on the network. There's not really, it seems like, I mean, we know what happened. What happened is World Sport started to gear up, so they thought, okay, let's do these tapings. This happened last year as well. They taped full TV and then ended up just putting it out of a random special on the network. Um, this will most likely end up as a TV show and not just a random network special, but it's more just a reaction to our sport and there's no real plan on what they want to do. Um, it's a shame. Um, those tapings, I've, I've read spoilers. Frankly, there's nothing. It's just a couple of matches. There's no, again, it's sort of like world sport, what we're just talking about. There's no, it's just matches for the sake of matches. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of story. Right, which will upset which will upset a lot of NXT fans, but they could be doing something in post with that though. So yeah, they could be, and also this is the first set of tapings. There's yeah, two or three sets scheduled. So as we go along, more stuff will be added. And like at the end of the day, I have trust that there'll be good shows just because the NXT brand as a whole has enough cachet with me where I'm willing to go, oh, okay, fine, whatever. But the tapings don't excite me too much right now. I have some issue with NXT UK just because there's a lot of talent that's, like, I'm happy for these guys, guys and girls making decent money, you know. It, It was... It's changed the lives of British Strong Style, basically, signing up to NXT UK last year. So this yeah. is potentially going to be the same for everyone that signed right now. I'm a little bit um, a little bit upset just because these people are going to be wrestling less and less in places I enjoy seeing them and they'll be stuck in this NXT mold. Um, and also, there are a lot of people getting signed who I don't think are ready to be signed. Um, Millie McKenzie, it seems like, has been signed. She's only been wrestling for a couple of years. She's very, very good, but she's only been wrestling for a couple of years. And I think she needs a couple more years to develop on the indie scene before trying to make it up in the movie. That's just my yeah, little aside. Sure. And- and where where the NXT in America differs is they have the performance center. So unless WWE is setting up a performance center and, and having a, a set of trainers over there for the NXT UK brand to kind of make NXT UK its own full-time thing where these people are learning every day, then it doesn't really make sense to be signing people who are so early in their indie careers. Yeah, uh, um, it's, 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 uh, it's kind of a mixed bag, but they might they might have more plans for for something like that to occur. We, we just have to kind of it's a wait and see at this point. I think. Yeah, um, NXT UK is slightly different in that um, you can work most indies. There's a couple of places where Pro you can't work. Um, Defiant is another company which at some point we'll probably talk about. Not on this episode, I don't think, but down the line, that's a company. Yeah, and Defiant, Defiant used to be What Culture Pro Wrestling. Yeah, the former What Culture Pro Wrestling. Yeah. Um, that's a company they're not allowed to work. So, but other than that, they can work Progress, they can work ICW, they can work OTT, all these places. So they will get have time to develop on the indie scene. It's just, I think, 
getting too much exposure too early could be a problem for them. Yeah, absolutely. And that was another one of the stories that that broke about the uh, NXT UK situation is they uh, some workers had to pull from uh, an indie show because the NXT UK have come down with a new rule, which is a seven day. You can't work another show seven days prior to working the NXT UK Uh shows, which a lot of people were upset about. But I actually I I find it to be a a smart rule. (laughs) Personally, Um, what has happened is so company that said that is Southside. Um, Southside has a reputation for, frankly, being liars. They're not a very well-regarded company in this country. Um, so El Negaro was a dude, was, it was El Negaro and Jason Collins were pulled from the show, and Southside claimed this rule. Um, but El Ligero and Connors worked a show that same day that the Southside show was originally supposed to be for that they got pulled from. Um, no one else has been, again, taping of this weekend, no one has been pulled from shows um, from, from the last couple of days. So it seems like Southside was just lying and there was some other reason why these guys couldn't work the show or, or double booked or whatever. And Southside just came up with this, oh, no, the evil WWE are trying to hurt us seven days, all this stuff. No, that's not true. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. I didn't realize. I, I hadn't kept that far abreast of it, but it's good Good for the update. Thank you very much. I I had no idea. I thought that it was... But even so, I didn't look at it like the whole evil WWE. So if that was their intention, then they failed miserably. Because as I said on my show when the news broke, to me, it was smart. When you look at what happened with... Uh, when you look at what happened with Hiromu Takahashi uh, getting his neck broken in that match with Dragon Lee, now I do not blame Dragon Lee at all. It's it's not a blame situation, but Dragon Lee had worked four shows in the two days prior to that match, right? To me, if you're going to say, look, if you're going to work our big shows, we want to make sure no one's getting injured, no one's uh, taking any unnecessary risks or anything. So the seven days before that, you can't work, which I guess if it turns out that's not true, that they're not saying that, then, you know, that's fine. But to me, that made it seem like they were good corporate citizens taking care of their talent it didn't make them seem evil to me so (laughs) it's not not so much taking care of their talent um it's more taking care of their investments um slightly different thing well i mean it's it's the same thing though that they're they're investing in the talent and the talent are investing in them so it's it's a two-way street but yeah no i get what you're saying it is it is still a little bit uh you know because you are preventing people from working for seven days i suppose is another way to look at it but it it made sense to me, and I didn't think it was a bad move. But if it's all bullcrap, then it's kind of irrelevant. What does Southside get out of out of lying about it, though? I, I've never um, understood that. Um, that makes them seem like the little guy in this war against the big company. And, right. you know, Joseph Connors and Alligaro were involved in a big story. I, I need to make it clear. It might turn out to be true, but all of the evidence points towards it being a lie. Right. So we're just, it's, it's another one of those wait and see, but it, there's not much to go on, but it doesn't look like it's true at this point. Yes. Because again, yeah. the talent pool would worked another show that same day. Um, talent are working shows seven days before this next set tapings. It might just be for some reason Southside particularly were targeted. And no idea why they would have been, because they're not that big, big, big deal of a company. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, that that kind of does it for what we've got to talk about for this month in Brut Res. Uh, there's a lot more to get to, but we need to. We're going to kind of introduce people slowly to all these other companies. We don't want to hit everyone with a million things all at once, because the the UK scene is, as we know booming so there's a lot going on and we'll, we'll get to it uh we'll, we'll have we'll sit down and have another chat next month to talk about some more big stories uh i guess before we go i like to get some match recommendations for stuff that's occurred uh this month we can being the first show we can probably go a little bit back if, if you want to into recent history but just uh, maybe three or four match recommendations that we can throw out for people to watch uh so that they can sort of get across and start to introduce to some of this talent 
Yeah, so I would go with the CCK Aussie Open match we talked about. Um, Walter Ishii we talked about. Um, Will Ospreay and Martin Kirby from the most recent um, World of Sport. Um, from Strong, Strong Style Evolved um, was the show, the Real Pro New Japan joint show. That was the month before. From that, I would go yep. to Kazuchika Okada versus Zack Sabre Jr. Yes, and, that was an amazing match. Yeah, yeah, it was incredible. Um, and there was a really good Walter match. No, it was Walter. It was Tomohiro Ishii versus Minoru Suzuki. I would watch those. Right, absolutely. Uh, so thank you very much. I'll drop links in the show notes to obviously a lot of those are from RevPro, so we'll, we'll, we'll drop the link in there for RPW On Demand. And uh, if anyone wants to know where they can watch World of Sport, especially here in Australia, shoot me a message and I can help you out with that. So thanks a lot for joining us, Akil. Is there anything else you want to say before you go? Where can people find you on the social medias if they want to have a go at you for not liking Adam Brooks? Um, yeah, so you can follow me on Twitter at Akil Khalid, A-Q-E-L-K-H-A-L-I-D. My DMs are open. We will have a long conversation about Adam Brooks or about how South 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 is, or hell, you can tell me anything you want. I will happy to chat with you. Um, I am also involved with rearviewreviews.com, um, the website of our mutual friend Arnold Furious. There's a couple cool projects about to start there, which I'm involved in, so keep an eye on that. That's about it, really. Very exciting, and I will drop links to all of those mentioned in the show notes. Now, I am at Greg Unchained on Twitter, at the Greg Unchained on Instagram. We collectively are known as the B Plus Wrestle on Twitter because wrestling wouldn't fit. We are the B Plus Wrestling pretty much everywhere else. We are on YouTube. We are on Spotify. We are taking over the world. Like, share, subscribe, leave us a five star review, and thank you very much for listening. Hold one, arm drag. You're not doing this. Get out. Let me tell you. It's still real to me, damn it! Coming! Yeah! Hold three! The moth covered!